All right, welcome back. This is going to be the second part of our video on using properties of trapezoids and kites, section 8.5, but this time we're only going to take a look at angles inside of trapezoids and all the funky things that are going on inside the trapezoid as it relates to the angles. Based on these three pictures, you're going to set up one of two equations. Either the angles are going to be equal or the angles are going to add up to 180 degrees. Which one is which, do you ask? Oh, you shall soon find out. So let's take a look at examples 5, 6, and 7 to determine which one of those two equations you'll use to help you find the value of x. Now here for examples 5, 6, and 7, we're going to be taking a look at finding angle measurements in trapezoids. And I can tell from my diagram that I'm dealing with an isosceles trapezoid. So check out example 5 here. We've got this base angle here of 70, which means my other base angle over here, that's also 70. Now one of the characteristics of trapezoids, remember bases are parallel. And if the bases are parallel, that means these two angles right here, both of those, well they're going to add up and have a sum of 180 because they're consecutive interior angles. So if I combine those two, I'll have 16x minus 2 plus that 70 degrees, that's going to have a sum of 180. Now combining these two terms, I'll end up with 16x plus 68, that equals 180. Then when I subtract 68 on both sides, so this is just algebra and arithmetic from this point, I get 16x equals 112, and then when you divide both sides by 16, you end up with 7 for x. Now x has a value of 7, but the 16x minus 80 minus 2, here's another way that you could have done this problem. You could have recognized that, hey, this angle right here, if this angle q is 70, then 16x minus 2, since they're going to be supplementary, that's got to be 110. So you could have set it up like this. 16x minus 2 equals 110. And then you'll have 16x equals 112, in which case you get x equals 7 again. So either way you would get 7 for the value of x. Now with that said, I think you guys can go ahead and do number 6 totally on your own, because these two angles have a sum of what? Yeah, that's right, you know it. They add up to 180. So go ahead and write an equation and figure out what that value for x is. So how'd you do with that? You could have set it up either way and you come up with a value of 10 for x. You can either add both angles up, set them equal to 180 and solve for x that way, or you could simply subtract 98 from 180 to come up with 82 and set 8x plus 2 equal to 82. When you're done, you get a value of 10 for x. Either way, the measure of angle E is going to be 82. Now example 7, that's our last one here. What we have to remember is that both the base angles are going to be the same. So that means the 3 angle W and angle Z, they're the same. So 3 plus 21x is going to equal 66. So if I subtract 3 on both sides, I'll get 21x is equal to 63. Then when you divide both sides by 21, you end up with a value of... 3 for x. And that's it. Booyah. We done with that. Now sometimes you might have to find the measure of angle w, and if you do, then we already know that that's the same thing as angle z, which is 66 degrees. So that's the end of this piece. We'll get into kites in the next video, so be sure to check out that one, because that'll be the rest of your notes and the last piece for this section. Alright? Peace. I'm out. See you soon.